This is Twit. So, okay, let's um, talk. Let's talk about your book. Um, Yay! So, it is. Uh, it takes place on a planet that that has uh, that doesn't tilt, doesn't spin. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's it's a tidally locked planet, right. which means that its period of rotation is the same as its period of orbit. Um, which is basically the same as the, the the way that the moon is tightly locked to Earth. So we only see one face of the moon all the time. Like the the we, there's like the dark side of the moon which we never get to see. And so it would be the same thing if like a planet always had one face turned to the sun. And it does actually orbit and rotate. It's just that the orbital period and the rotation period are the same. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so that so that there's a dark and a light, uh, a night and a day, which is a place. Yeah, they're places rather than times. And I, you know, the poor copy editor who worked on this book, we asked her to like go through and make sure that at no point do people ever use words like today, tomorrow, yesterday, you know, hour, minute, you know, any any words for time from Earth because I didn't want to have any of that in the book. I wanted day and night to be just places, not times. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what? why the tidally locked planets? What, what inspired you to write about that? It really started when I was working on io9. And like I said, I got to read and edit so much science coverage during that time. And I was just like, I was getting to talk to scientists more and I was getting to like learn about science um, from the, our coverage and just from reading stuff in general. And it was a, an amazing education. And basically, I mean, that period when I was working on io9 was kind of, in a lot of ways, it was the golden age for exoplanet discovery. We were discovering a lot of exoplanets. We were learning more about exoplanets. And the thing that I kept hearing from scientists was that if humans do manage to, to colonize a planet outside of our solar system, it will probably be tidally locked. And that boils down to the fact that I guess most of the stars, at least in our part of the galaxy, are red dwarfs. And if you were going to be close enough to the star to get uh, liquid water and to be warm enough for people to live, it it's going to be so close because the star is cooler. It's going to be so close that you get pulled into a tidally locked orbit. And so it's just basically the law of averages says that if we do manage to get outside the solar system, we're going to be colonizing a planet like the one in my book. Maybe not exactly like, but the same kind of planet. So the, the planet is so fascinating. The world that you've built is so fascinating. So, you know, there's um, the, the one side that is so regimented. Right. Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things that, you know, scientists talked about uh, to me in, in relation to tidal lake planets, and one of the things that I kind of obsessed about was how do you keep track of the passage of time? How do you kind of have a, a, a normal sleep schedule? And, you know, basically if the, the sun doesn't rise or set and there's just like permanent day over here and permanent night over there, um, how do you know when to sleep? How do you know when to go to work? And how do you kind of keep that normal human pattern that we have on earth? And I sort of thought that, you know, there would be people on this planet who would really believe that if we don't keep to a strict circadian rhythm and like all sleep at the same time, we're kind of going to stop being human in some sense. Mm. And over time, I mean, I think they've been on this planet for like 500 years or something. Over time, that has turned into this really regimented society where everything, everybody does everything at the same time because they're so obsessed with trying to stay human and trying to hold on to this, this circadian rhythm that we had on Earth. And so, you know, and then there's another city where basically people who rebelled against that super regimented society went and they were like, we're just going to live in harmony with the planet. We're going to sleep whenever we feel like it. We're going to work whenever we feel like it. And we're going to kind of, you know, because the sky never changes and everything is just constant, we're just going to kind of go with that and, you know, live in a state of nature kind of. They and have great parties. And have amazing parties. <laughs> and like, you know, and I wrote some scenes which aren't in the book where people kind of talk about like some this sort of philosophy that they have of like, you know, how we almost have a duty as like people on this new planet reinventing ourselves. We almost have a de duty to be total hedonists and just like live for pleasure, live for whatever makes you feel good because, you know, we're living on a planet where there's no constants or there's, there is a constant, the sky is constant, but there's no like there's none of the things that we took for granted on earth. And so we should just kind of do what feels good. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the scenes where they talk about that didn't end up in the book, but I feel like you kind of get that feeling anyway. Yeah. It's like Las Vegas. It's a, it's a lot like, <laughs> it's a lot like Vegas on another planet. And yeah. it kind of becomes a little scarily like Vegas at certain points, I right. think. 
Or that feeling like when you've been in a, you go in to see a movie and it's daytime and like yeah. you come out and it's night. Oh my gosh. Then, <laughs> yeah. No, like, seriously. Yeah. That just. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've had that. Like if I go to a matinee or something, or sometimes I used to go to critic screenings that were in the middle of the day and I would, you come outside and you're like, what is this? You know, it's super weird to come out and be, be super bright outside. 